These are my current golf clubs. I've had this set of golf clubs pretty much for the last at least 12 months and some of them much, much longer. However, I'm ready for a change. I am gonna change some of the golf clubs in this bag. In this video, I'm gonna talk through every single golf club in my bag, tell you the pros and the negatives of some of these clubs and whether they are gonna stay in the bag or is it time for a change? So you might be thinking, well, why change, Rick? Well, for a couple of reasons. One, I've got a big year, 2023. It's the start of a brand new golf season. I've got some really exciting Break 75s lined up for this year, and I want to have the best tools possible. I've also got some very important matches against some of the biggest tour stars in the world this year. And again, I wanna have clubs that I feel confident with Albeit I'm starting 10 under par in those videos, I need to have clubs I feel confident with. Also, I know we've teased it a couple of times, the review channel, which I'm setting up very soon, which will allow me to test more golf clubs than ever before, is being released in the month of May. If you've not subscribed there yet, jump over, subscribe, link in the description below. So let's kick things off with the putter, the flat stick, the club you use the most in the bag. Now, as you know, I've been a big fan of this brand for a number of years, Even Roll. I really like the feel of the putter. Um, I've used this particular style for a number of years. Now, this particular version has no alignment on it at all. I had a putting lesson off Phil Kenyon, and we identified that actually no alignment might best suit my eye. And I don't disagree. However, I feel like I need some level of a dot even here just on the top, so I know where the center of the putter is. Now, I'm gonna go through all my clubs, and at the end of this video, tell you whether I'm gonna keep them in the bag or whether I'm binning them. Bag or bin. We'll come back to the putter in a bit. But yeah, lots of positives in there. Okay, wedges up next. Now, <laughs> I say this with a smirk on my face because many of you watch the channel might know that maybe the wedge game is the weakest part of my golf game. Um, I feel like that predominantly is due to technique and also, in between the ears, in the brain. Look how much he's thinking about it, eh? What we were saying about in the podcast about routine. He's got no routine, has he? Slowly but surely, I'm starting to get comf more confident in that region. Now, the four wedges I currently carry, I've got a 46 degree, which is effectively a pitching wedge, a 50 degree, which is a gap wedge, and they're both SM8s. I've got a 56 degree sand wedge and a 60 degree lob wedge, which are SM9s. Um, I'm going to talk about this club first, the 46 degrees, which is pretty cool. It's got the stamping of my name there on the back. Now this is a pitching wedge and I like the look of this wedge. I love the thinness of it. I love the fact on these really short, delicate shots, this isn't too powerful. However, I definitely see a downside where I'm playing a par three, and let's say it's around about that 130 yard mark. I think I'd want a more traditional pitching wedge. I feel like if I'm gonna change the pitching wedge, I actually want it to match the set of irons that I'm using. But overall, I don't mind that club. I love the feel of it, but it's just not very forgiving on those longer shots. Um, Gat wedge, I really like. It's one of my favorite clubs in the bag. 56 degrees, I'm not again. Doesn't offend me, I really like it. And then the 60 degrees, a club I've used quite a lot more this year. A couple of dints here at the bottom even just show the amount of wear I've been getting out of this wedge today. And even the face, I've not had a 60 degree wedge in the bag for this long. The, the grooves and the face is really starting to wear down. Because believe it or not, <laughs> I do actually practice my wedges quite a bit. Maybe not enough yet, but quite a bit. The couple of dents there on the top were actually when I played a match at JCB against the good, good lads when I hit a shot out of the ditch. Got it. So the wedges overall, I've liked Vokey wedges in the past. They're not the softest feeling wedges in the world, but I don't think this set for me is the biggest issue. However, I think a different makeup in loft would definitely help me. Like, I don't like the fact there's six degrees between my 50 and my 56 and only four degrees between my 56 and my 60. So I'll come back to that in a moment, what I think the best loft makeup for me would actually be. So moving on to the irons next, I have four to nine iron in the Titleist T100s. Now, 
I have really enjoyed using these irons, I have. For me, this style of iron, this kind of cavity back iron, really suits my game. Um, I've had a few of these kind of cavity back irons over the number of years I've been playing golf. And for me, they have the perfect blend between forgiveness, feel, and kind of distance, but not too powerful. I hate really powerful irons. They always give me the fear that I'm gonna hit them too far. That sounds ridiculous, but I kind of have that weird fear with them. These ones are really nice and forgiving, certainly off the bottom hits. My probably biggest gripe with this set of irons, and it probably matches with the same um, opinion with the wedges that I currently use, is I just don't feel like they feel the best. Like they don't feel super soft off the head. I've definitely used irons in the past that have given me the same level of forgiveness that have felt better. For example, the Wilson set I had years ago, they were some of the best feeling irons I've ever used, the V6s. So I'm kind of looking for maybe some irons that have slightly better feel, but with the same forgiveness. I've really got my eye on the brand new Cobra CB irons. I'm looking forward to testing those a little bit more because they look quite similar to these. I'm intrigued to know what the feel is like. Because overall, I like the looks. Again, if I'm going to get a new set of irons, I would still go from four iron, but I'd also throw in the pitching wedge from the set of irons. Overall, these have been pretty good, but we'll come on to it in a bit. Ah, they might not be staying in the bag for too much longer. So currently my longest iron in the bag, Callaway Apex UT. This is 18 degrees and effectively it's a two iron. Now this particular iron has only just come back into the golf bag recently after needing a repair job because a couple of years ago, I think it was about that long ago, maybe, yeah, maybe 18 months ago, this, the, the neck actually ended up coming loose and the, and the shaft came out uh, when I was actually hitting some warm-up shots before playing JCB one time. So it's been redundant for a while. I found it again recently. I've had it repaired at Torex. Nick Hibbs repaired it for me. Did a great job. Um, however, I've lost a little bit of magic with this club. I used to really love hitting this a lot. It felt like my safety club off the tee. At the moment, maybe I've not hit it enough just yet. It's literally been in the bag for about two months so far. But this whole section of my bag, this longer iron, this gap between my longest traditional irons, my four iron, and my three wood has always been a part of the bag I swap quite a lot. I'll try different three irons, I'll try two irons, I've sometimes tried hybrids more recently, you've seen that. When I played at Royal Liverpool in the break 75, you saw how that went. Not great. So this part of my bag is somewhere that I definitely need more attention to. I probably need to work out how much, how many times I'm actually going to hit this longest iron. I think maybe a slightly chunkier three iron. If I'm going to change my iron set, I might look for a three iron that is still in the same kind of brand or the same family, but a more chunkier model. That might be the way forward with this longest iron. My longest serving golf club in the bag by a long way. You've seen it many, many years. I've probably had this club in the bag for at least five years plus, maybe six or seven years. You guys will probably know better than me. Cobra F7, Old Bluey, as it's become nicknamed. Um, ah, can this ever leave the bag? Can it ever, ever, ever come out of the bag? I'm not sure. Uh, with me and Three Wood, I've had mixed relationships with Three Woods anyway, and also this club. Um, but I've never found a three wood that I've tested over the years that for me sits as nice as behind the golf ball. Regarding, I've ne never been the biggest fan of the blue, which is mad to say, isn't it? But shape wise, I love how it's shallow. It's not too deep the head. I've always mentioned these, these kind of um, rails on the bottom of the three wood. I've always loved those rails. And even though probably technically they don't really do a great job of interaction with the floor, I love the fact it gives me that reassurance that I can almost dig this club into the ground and those rails are going to help it pop back up and not really kind of take too much of a divot. Um, I don't know if I could ever take this club out of the bag. Can I? So before I get onto the driver, I'm going to talk about the golf ball I use. I've been using it a number of years. Titleist Pro V1, the normal version. Now, again, I love this ball. I love the feel of it, the flight of it. I love it. The feel off the putter is fantastic. As an all-round ball, I mean, does anything really get much better than a Pro V1? There's lots of golf balls that are getting very, very good at the moment. Um, I've definitely got my eye on a few things I'd like to try. So the Bridgestone golf ball, 
similar one to the, what Tiger uses. That definitely, when I've tested it and performed with it, it's been very, very solid. And also, I might even try the slightly more spinny version of this, which is the Titleist Pro V1X, the one with the red number. Sometimes I feel like I could do with just a little bit more spin, shots into greens, getting the ball to stop a little bit more. I've never been a, a player that needs to reduce spin with driver, I actually spin it quite low. So maybe that little bit more spin with a Pro V1X might suit my game. But overall, it's not an area that needs changing. I've loved using this golf ball. Like I said, I've used it for this Pro V1 ever since it really came out back in you know, the year 2000. I've kind of had this as my stable golf ball to go to or the newer versions at least. But yeah, it might, might be a time to change this as well. And then this, the big stick, the driver, the Ping G4 25 Max. Quite possibly the best club I've put in the bag over the last 10 years. And that's reviewing a lot of the golf equipment. This for me is this kind of unicorn driver. It's outrageously forgiving. It really is. And that doesn't mean I, I still don't hit bad shots, of course, as it's not a miracle worker, but shots off centre when I'm not hitting the middle of the golf club, that's just the GC quad dot when I'm uh, hitting on the launch monitor. When you don't hit the middle of this driver, it's still very, very forgiving. It feels like offline, it doesn't go massively too far right or massively too far left. Again, that's sometimes user error, granted. My one, well, I've got two things with this driver that I'm not the biggest fan of. Forgiveness is the number one strength of this driver without even a question. And I actually love the look of this driver. There's two things, however, I'm not the biggest fan of, or I think could maybe be improved. First off, the sound. It's a, it's a, it's a crack. It's not the nicest sound in the world. It's quite, it's quite high pitched, it's quite loud. When you're hitting people watching, you feel quite conscious that it's a bit garish. The latest model, the G430, is definitely a better sound, a more muted crack. So that's one negative with this particular driver, but again, I can get over it a little bit. Um, the other one is I don't think, for me, this is the longest driver I'm using. In fact, I know it's not. I've even tested some drivers earlier on this year, such as the Callaway Paradigm, um, that, that's considerably longer than this driver. However, I'm worried, dubious, concerned about switching because the one thing I do not want to sacrifice is that forgiveness level. For me, forgiveness is more important and confidence. You might have heard recently, I played a very, very special golf course at Augusta National and I was done that first tee and I hit this driver. And I set it up behind the golf ball, I was nervous as hell, I really was. I was shaking, I was like petrified, but you know, excited obviously. I don't think I would have wanted another driver in the world to look down on than this for that particular tee shot. And it delivered, it delivered and it delivered all day long at that golf course where I needed it to. That's why I'm possibly maybe a bit scared about changing this particular driver. Anyway, that's the rundown of the golf clubs. I'm gonna show you my brand new golf bag. And then we're gonna find out which clubs are gonna potentially stay and which clubs have the chance of changing. So check this out, my brand new golf bag, and it's pretty special. This is a Lynx Masters bag with the Masters logo, Augusta National. You can only buy, it's a little bit of a flex, you can only buy this in Augusta National Pro Shop, and I had to buy it. I mean, it's absolutely stunning. At the moment, I might consider just one strap in it, like that, a model in the bag. But then again, I might go two strap. I mean, that's just, it's pretty special, isn't it? It's pretty special bag. Right, anyway, that's the bag. Let's work out what we're gonna keep, and what we're gonna get rid of. But let's, let's go with the easy decisions first. For me, the easy decision, oh God, is the one actually. <laughs> I think the easy decision, I think hopefully a lot of you will appreciate this, but I can't see the three would go anywhere. For me, I, I just don't, imagine a three wood that's gonna i don't need anything more from it i just need to trust this one that little bit more i don't want a three wood that goes further i don't want one that's more forgiving that for me is perfect 
Might need a new head cover though. <laughs> um, other club that's going to stay in the bag. I'm going to say, certainly for the time being, this is staying in the bag. The driver, the G425. At the moment, right now, as I am recording this video at the start of a brand new year of 2023, after pretty much testing all the brand new drivers that have been released this year, I am yet to have my head turned for a new driver. For me, that G425 does everything I want it to do. It's not perfect. There's still room for improvement for me personally, sound and maybe a driver that's as forgiving, if not a little bit longer. But so far, that is staying in the bag and it looks good in there. Right. What's definitely going? This is definitely going. The Callaway Apex UT. It's going to go on a wall because I've got a lot of history with this golf club. It's been a beautiful tool. But right now, I'm not getting on with it. And that is being binned. Out of here. Gone. Um, where are we going to go next? Well, I know for a fact... The 46 degree wedge is not staying in the bag. Because even if I was to get brand new wedges, I'm going to have to get a wedge that suits the set. This, For me, I've tested it. I tried it. It's something I've always wanted to do. But right now, that is out of here. Never to be seen again. Again, I'm not chucking these and I'm not going to give them away. And at the moment, I actually might keep some of these clubs in the actual golf bag because I'm playing golf again soon. So, But these are clubs that are definitely ready to be replaced. The putter, do a bag or bin. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there's lots and lots of positives about this putter. There really is. And I, and I do love the feel of this putter. I love the look of it. I think really, I'm going to bag it. However, I'm going to do something here on this top edge, either an alignment dot or get, get something here on this top edge. Not so much an alignment here, but just something that tells me where the middle of the putter is. I really like this putter. I've, I've enjoyed even rolls over a long time, um, and I think that's not particularly going anywhere. So that is also in the bag. So next up, the remaining wedges. Yeah, get out. Right. Um, the 50, the 56, and the 60. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I just feel like the loft makeup isn't quite right. I love having a 60 degree in the bag. I do. So for me, a 60 degree, whether it's exactly this one, I mean, I'm happy with this club. I really do actually quite like it. I like this wide sole. It's got 14 degrees of bounce because obviously I need as much help as I can. That 60 degree could absolutely stay in the bag. It might change if I change my other wedges just so they all match. However, I do think if I go for a more traditional wedge in a new set of irons, I would then want to go 50 degree and maybe 55 degree. Now, at the moment, again, these clubs aren't bad. I like the look of these clubs and the shape and everything else. They're not the best feeling in the world. I would prefer maybe something a bit softer. I couldn't tell you exactly right now what those wedge options might be. Again, I've not tested as many as I'd like to have done yet this year. More reviews coming soon. Don't forget to check out the review channel, launching in May. Um, so at the moment, these are on the fence. I think they could easily be binned, but currently, because I don't know any other options. I think I am actually going to just keep these in the bag. It's not so much these golf clubs that are bad. I just think maybe I need a different setup to these wedges. Okay. And then the last few golf clubs in the bag, the irons, the T100s. Um, listen, these have been fine. They have been, but I think a change is needed. I do. For me, I want something maybe with the same level of forgiveness and maybe even very similar looks but something that feels softer something that gives me that really satisfying hit when I strike it now that might be down to me not hitting the middle enough granted but I definitely am considering in fact I am going to be looking at changing my irons this year again I've got my eyes on those Cobra CB irons and maybe other options as well I'm not saying that's a guarantee and you never know I might test those and go back to these but at the moment these are not staying in the bag last but definitely not least the golf ball um i think again change might be necessary in this department i'm going to put some pro v1x's in the golf bag in the very next round of golf that i play and do a little bit more testing with the x and maybe some other golf balls in the future 
So at the moment, also, saddens me to say, maybe even the Titus Pro V1 might not be staying in the bag. Now, just to clarify, what made it through into this incredible bag? Driver, Ping G425 Max, Old Bluey, Cobra F73 Wood, might even roll ER2V, maybe with a dot, an alignment dot. Currently, the three wedges, my 60 degree, 56 and 50, currently they're definitely on the brink of being replaced, but currently not yet. But not that many from the existing set made it into my brand new bag for 2023. Now, as you can imagine, I'm playing golf again very soon. More videos being released. So the golf clubs I've just been, <laughs> you'll probably see back in the bag just for the immediate future, just because I obviously need golf clubs to use. I need a bit more testing to start making some decisions on what clubs. But these are the ones that are staying. Don't hold me to it exactly, but these are the ones I'm staying in the bag. The other ones I am definitely looking to be replacing to start a new season, to break 75 more options, to beat at least at all pro this year is the goal. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and we shall see you very soon.